Hi guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. Your video is about to start shortly. Please take this opportunity to hit the like button down below, leave some comments, tell your friends. Interaction, likes, subscriptions help my channel to grow and help me to keep producing content for yourselves. If you're new to my channel, check out the other videos that I've got. There are over 500 videos at this stage, so there should be something there for everybody. Again, video is about to start. Hit that like button down below. Hi guys, um, so this is going to be a long one. Uh, this is a classic childers for fishing. So this is a size 5 uh, Daiichi 2051 hook and I'm going to use white gel spun to tie this fly. So, for the tip of the tag, we're going to use silver oval. So I'm going to take that down. Now this hook is not, because it has this very progressive bend, it's hard to say where you should start and where you should stop with this. Um, so traditionally you'd sort of go back probably to around the back of the barb, but uh, Given the shape of this one, I'm probably going to stay a little bit further forward than that. Okay, so the floss tag on this one calls for uh, like a powder blue or light blue floss. So I'm going to wind this from a lot further forward than the length of the tag is intended to be because I find it much easier to get the uh, tail to lay down if you tie it back onto the floss base that you create with this. So I've turned the hook slightly sideways so that it's easier to wrap into the bend of it. Take it back till you meet the silver tip and then we're going to come forward. So the most of the body of this is seals fur. So if we take it up in here the seals fur will cover up any lumps and bumps that we get. So we're going to take this back then until the point where we want the tail to be tied in. I'm going to look for a relatively flat topping here. I'll set that up on top. And trim that off. So, um, the tail has multiple veilings on it, so the first thing I need is a pin tail feather. I'll take a pin tail feather. I'm going to nip out the tip of it, and then I'm going to take, make a little V, turn it up like this, lay that on just behind my tie-in point and pull that forward until we just jump off the stock onto the fibres. Tie that down forward. So next we want a little bit of blue macaw and a little bit of scarlet macaw. So I'm just going to take a couple of fibres of the blue. Match them up. There's 
set them up on top, straighten it up, and again tie back until we meet our tail there. And then we're going to do the same with the red. So we just take a couple of fibers. from each side of the stalk. Same thing. Match them up. Set them up on top. They probably will marry to the blue macaw. Tie in and tie back. I'm just going to wrap all this forward to create a sort of smooth bit because the very back of the fly is uh, is silk. So. You can put in an ostrich butt if you want, but what I'm going to do is use a very fine black merino wool. Create a little butt out of that. Then we're going to add our ribs, so I'm going to use this uh, lace, so a silver lace. I'm going to set that on on your side and down around about what five o'clock or so we were looking at it. And then we're going to put on some uh, flat silver tinsel. I'm going to use a, a vintage metal one for that and I'm going to tie it on on the flat so above that because when we wrap it it will then be the first one or the leading edge if that makes sense so next we want to put on a, a yellow silk rear to the fly here. So I'm going to take a portion of yellow silk here, probably 14 inches or so of it just for handiness, double it, tie it in and then wrap back with the two strands leading each other side by side. That'll create an underbody. Get to the butt and start to travel forward. Now what you'll find is that I'm overlapping with one. So the rear strand is overlapping as we wrap. Now, hackles. Uh, as hackle on this one, I'm going to use a badger cape, badger saddle here, dyed yellow. Double that. Snap off tip. And I'm going to tie this on directly on top. And then dub the biggest portion of the body with yellow seal. Take a turn just to catch a few fibers that'll allow us to spin and tighten up the dubbing rope and then we wrap this forward on itself and then we change over because we need a little red section of dubbing here at the front. So 
body is dubbed. It's time to wrap our tinsels. So we start with a flat, get it started. I'm going to pull my hackle up and forward so I'm not trying not to trap down the fibers of it. So once I've got under it, I can then put on the second turn. So generally hackles tend to begin at the second turn, so that's just an advance of the tie-in point of that. Tie that in, flip it back, tie it down. So then I'm going to take my lace, I'm going to twist it up to tighten it, and we're going to follow the flat. Just tight, hopefully sitting tight in behind it. And this is the one that's going to protect the hackle. Tie it, flip it, tie it off, trim it. So then we're going to get our hackle. That rib that slipped, so we'll just move it forward. I'm flipping the hackle over or folding it back on itself because I don't want it to sit straight out, so I'm altering. The lay of the stock as we go here. Hopefully we should just have enough to do like one full turn then in front of the whole thing. Squeeze that all in on itself. Uh, going to put in one turn or two turns of red hackle here. I'm taking a short red cock hackle, strip off the base, double it, and then I'm going to snap that, leaving only a short section of the hackle to wind on. Tie that, fold it back. And we'll probably get about two or so turns out of this, but that's enough. So, the uh, hackle in front of that, then the throat, uh, we're going to use a pintail feather. So. We're going to use one of the small feathers from up on the neck. I'll strip off the fluff. Find the tip, which is quite fiddly. Snap it out. So that is our body and hackling done. So I'm going to wax that up, put on a couple of turns just to get a base to tie our wing in. So for the wing, the wing is 
going to be like a mixed up wing so it's uh, it's consisting of uh, tippet which I've done a couple of strands there's a little bit of uh, scarlet macaw there's grey mallard there's uh, golden pheasant tail there is turkey tail and there's a little bit of bustard in it as well so what I've done is these are all in strips with uh, I'm going to put the longest thing sort of on top and then I'm going to create sort of layers so next wing then is going to be the bustard and the red macaw so we're going to set those on top of that and we're not trying to marry these together we're just I'm just creating like like a sandwich effect with them and then the uh, the bit of tippet and then the bit of grey mallard I'm going to pinch these together and we've created like this little bundle I'm going to set that down with itself curving up and then I have the same for the far wing bundle effect here so I'm now going to take the two of those I'm going to match their tip lengths up and sort of just pinch the two together and then that is going to go on all in one go so I'm going to take it out here uh, to be about the length of the tail then I'm going to transfer hands and pinch that and pull that down just going to pinch my nail into that just to get it to sit lower and that is our sort of mixed wing on In there and trim off those butts. I want to take them a uh, vineyard salier clear, a real th fine thin one, and I'm just going to put a little blob of that just onto those cut ends and wrap over them, and that. That dries will secure the wing in place. So, uh, next, what we want to do is to transfer onto black tie and thread because we're going to have a black head. So, we need to start building that up now. So, uh, Next one I'm going to put on is a little bit of wood duck. So um, if we look at this feather here, uh, you've got the bad side towards you there. So I'm going to do it what we call tips down. So all these fibres that have gone on have gone on in the same orientation. Tips down. So I'll take a strand of that. Or sorry, a slip of it. Set it on the side tie it in and then I need a matching feather for your side take a little strip of it so you can see this is what we mean by tips down I'm going to match it up by looking at it across the top pinch it in place tie that in there and then the other constituents of this wing 
uh, there's Galena and there's Powder Blue Macaw in it. So these are both sort of inherently short materials. So I'm going to put those on the sides. The Macaw is the shortest, so I'm, I've sandwiched it on top of the Galena and then set up on side here. And then we're going to put uh, some mallard over the top of it. So I'm going to take a little bit of bronze mallard, pull off a strip, set that up on top. And then I'm going to repeat the process on my side. So I'm using that natural curve to cloak the, the wing. ends there. Wax the thread, pinch all, and bind that all down. Now I'm looking for a fairly straight topping. Set the topping up on top, probably the length of the wing and a little bit. Tie it in and then I'm going to use this stock just to reposition it so that it's up on top. It's a little bit long so I'm just going to pull it in on itself a little bit. of little kingfisher feathers here as uh, cheeks on it. Nice 
side, one on your side. Just play with the uh, stalks till you get them orientated the way you want. Trim that off. And then uh, horns of. of uh, blue gold macaw. Match them up. 